Hey guys, this is a quick tutorial of the new quote-unquote fancy grass system. It's not that fancy yet, but hopefully it'll get fancier. Uh, so if you can see, I got a grass entity selected here. And it's a normal grass entity, so you know it plants the way that it normally does. And in general, any grass entity that is working the way that you want it to work, I think you can just leave the way it is. The fancy grass system is only there to solve problems right now, and so you don't actually need to use it uh, if you've got some grass that's already planting well. If you don't have grasses planting well and you need to use some of the new fancy features, then it's pretty easy. You just go into the fancy panel here. Um, the rest of the panels are the same. You go into the fancy panel and you check the fancy box. And now when you plant, you can see that it plants actually in a different uh, style as well. It plants out from points that it finds on the ground. It's kind of a wavefront rather than a sort of global sort of planting. And the first thing that I uh, want to show you, and it doesn't necessarily have to do with fanciness at all, it's just a good thing to know, is there are these new visor things in the lister, and I'm going to send out more information about those in a bit. But as far as the grass is concerned, what visors are in general is they are ways of in putting information overlays on top of the things that are listed in the lister panel. So in this case, you can see I've got a filter set up to show me all the grass entities. And what I can do is I can go in here and turn on the grass planting distribution filter. And what that, I'm sorry, visor. And what that does is it shows me um, <clears throat> for all of the things that are in the listing, it shows me if they've had a replant operation on, done on them since I've been editing, where the replanter thought it put all the grass. The reason this is useful, uh, even for the old one, so when I replant on the old one, it, it shows up as well, you can see. Uh, the reason this is, this is useful just in general is because it allows me to see where it thinks it put the grass, which may not be where the grass mesh actually shows up. There was a problem I sent out mail about that I'm sure you saw about how one of the grass entities was not centered properly, and I think that was causing a perceived problem with clumping uh, that, you know, is something that's very hard to know is happening if you can't see the points that the planter actually thinks it's planting. So with that on, it's pretty easy to kind of spot check a distribution. You know, you can look at it. Uh, from up above and you can see does it look relatively well distributed to you or doesn't it? Uh, and that kind of helps you get get an idea of exactly what's going on. Now, <clears throat> back to the fancy planting system. Assuming that I am in fancy mode, then there's uh, only really one important change that you need to be aware of. And that is that most of these things are obeyed in the fancy planting system. They're things that you use to set. So all of this stuff like scale at edge and scale zero and one and the color and all that stuff should go through correctly. The only thing that's different is this density and density scale at edge things. Uh, this is no longer used. And the reason for that is because density is a pretty odd concept to work with. It doesn't super help you understand how the grass is going to be planted and it has some weird sort of w things that it means. So the fancy planting system works off a different thing which is just how many meters away do you want the plants to be, right? And so there's two values for that. There's the minimum planting distance, which is the closest that you ever want plants to be, and the maximum planting distance, which is the furthest that you ever want plants to be. And then there's a curve that you can use to actually control the fall off between them as you get towards the outside. So in general, if I went in here and I changed this down to 0.5 and I changed this to 0.5 so that we're just generally planting at 0.5, you can see that I get a much tighter uh, packing of the plants because now they can be much closer together. But let's say that I want it to fall off towards the edge. So in the middle, I want it to be planting at 0.5, but towards the edge, I want it to actually be quite far apart. Let's say I want it to be three apart. Then when I hit replant, you can see that I get exactly that. It gets sort of sparser at the edge and in the middle, it's a little more dense. Now, <clears throat> hopefully all of you are sort of familiar with, the, with standard Bezier curves. Unfortunately, I haven't had time yet to actually add a Bezier curve control to the UI system yet, which is something that we definitely need. But in the meantime, you can actually set the Bezier curve yourself. And what it is is it's just the four parameters of the curve um, you know, that range between 0 and 1. So in this case, I've just got a line. It goes 0 with a tangent of 0.5 and 1 with a tangent of 0.5. What I can do is I can say that I want it to be more, uh, the distribution to be a little more sort of rounded. So it's going to stick at its, at its uh, beginning point a little bit more and then go up. And if I want to, I can have it be all zeros at the beginning and just go up to the, the one at the end. And then you get a very like concentrated center distribution. 
Similarly, I could do the opposite of that. I could, you know, make these both ones, so it goes from zero to one, uh, sort of more of a rounded, and you can see you get exactly that. You get something that's like got a little concentration in the center, but it quickly kind of jumps up uh, to the to the fall off that's at the max planting distance. So these will hopefully will get a curve control eventually, so you can see these because they're hard to edit by hand if you're not a programmer. If you want anything more subtle. But you can also do weird stuff, like if you want the distribution to sort of be ringlet sort of styled, you can see you can do that sort of thing, which is like, you know, oh, I start at the min, I get to the max sort of in the middle, and then I go back out to the min at the end, et cetera and so forth. Also, min and max planting distance are really talking about the curve, so there's no reason they can't be opposite. They don't actually have to be minimums and maximums in value, those are just the minimums and maximums of what the curve will be. So you can always invert them. So you have a lot of control over the planting now. Uh, hopefully that is useful to you. Uh, it was requested explicitly, but I'm not actually sure it, what people were planning on doing with it. If there's some tweaks we need to make uh, to make it more useful to you, you can let me know. Now, this system obviously also works with the planting uh, scale that was in there before. And the planting scale also affects the distance. So the scale is automatically taken into account when you do the distance. So if I go back in here and I say that I want some of my plants to be half-sized, you can see that it will automatically change the distribution to make it so that plants that are half-sized are packed closer together than plants that are full-sized. And I don't know if we always want that. I would probably, left to my own devices, I will add a checkbox in here that says that to ignore that behavior. Um, but if anyone has strong opinions about that, you know, let me know and we can, we can fuss with it. So that's basically how this works. There is a control for the planting scale as well. And what that is, is there was this thing in the old one, um, so like if you had the scale at edge thing. So let's say, you know, I'm going to do a very standard distribution. So everything is, you know, back to a pretty, uh, pretty straightforward values here, whatever the defaults are. Let's say I'm going to do a pretty standard distribution, um, and I, I also reset the scales, so the scales are all the same. So I'm just getting um, basically exactly the same thing that I was getting before with, a, with an even distribution of guys. But I go in here and I set the, the old value thing for scale at edge, so I set that down to 2.5. So now I'm getting at the edge, I'm getting much smaller entities than I used to get before, right? Um, but in the middle, they're still the same size. So that also has a curve on it now. So if you want to, you can also do things like keeping the scale uh, kind of at its max for longer and just having a much tighter fall off there if you want um, by, you know, 0, 0, 0, 1, so it's kind of a really uh, steep curve at the end. Or you can do the same um, in, in inverse, which is sort of a steep ascent curve that falls off. So you can have it so that most of the things are down at that little scale and only in the very middle you've got it, um, et cetera, et cetera. Now, one of the things that's worth mentioning, I'll point it out at this point because this, hey, this is a lot of grass entities, is there's a limit count on grass entities currently. That's just an engine feature. It has nothing to do with the planting stuff um, because various graphics cards and so on have problems with that. One of the things that you may find is that as you are setting these things, if you are planting too many grass entities, you may get into a situation where it just simply runs out of entities. And you can see that that happened here. You notice it just stopped. Like it's done planning, but it can't get out to the edges. And what that is, is that's when you've just planted too many entities. So the easiest thing to do is just to go in and maybe make that planting distance a little bit higher so that you get a little bit sparser distribution. Um, and then it can, you know, it will be able to get out to the edges. And there's really nothing we can do about that planning wise. Um, I know Ignacio was talking about possibly breaking up uh, grass entities into more groups, which maybe would allow you to go beyond that limit. But for the time being, that's just that's just the way it is. And rendering wise, we kind of need that in order for efficiency in the engine. So that's that's not going to improve. Anyway, so that's basically all you need to know about the planting controls in terms of the distribution of stuff in the planting. Now, let me talk about the features as far as obstacle avoidance and that sort of stuff is concerned. So here I've got kind of a little. Uh, fake obstacle avoidance scenario. I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn off the actual grass meshes, meshes excuse me, um, because they can be a little confusing when we're actually looking at the distributions. So this guy, if I replant him here, 
you can see how he's kind of planting with the old system. Now, one of the things that happened in the old system, and I'm not sure, I don't super understand all of the kind of conventions you guys were using in the old system, but one of them seemed to be that the place where you put the cursor, like the actual, uh, I shouldn't say cursor, the grass entity location, that had to be above the like highest thing that could block you when planting or something like that. Otherwise, you would plant inside stuff. I'm not sure. It was kind of a little bizarre because it would use that as a way of saying if it hit that thing first, then don't plant. Um, I got rid of that convention because I didn't super think it made sense. What happens with the new system, if you turn on fanciness, uh, is it will just look to see if it is inside something. And if it's inside something, then it won't plant. So it doesn't really matter where the cursor is. The cursor can be below the thing or wherever. And I think that's better in general because the cursor is kind of used to figure out where the grass is supposed to be planted in the first place because you may have situations where you need to plant grass like inside a cave or something like that. And I don't think we want to have to like worry about where this is, this uh, entity center is, other than just it happens to be at the right height so that whatever the first thing below it is, is what's the ground. So that's the first thing to be aware of. If you have any problems with that system, let me know, but that seemed like a saner way to go as far as I'm concerned. So that's how uh, the obstacle interior detection works. Now, one of the things that people were saying is they wanted the ability to control how far around obstacles things were planted. Now, I haven't made a whole lot of progress in that area yet because I think we need more complex manifold stuff in order to do that. But in general, you do have one control already for that, which is you can see that by default, it's sort of staying away from these guys. And that's basically using the same as the old system was. But now there's a little thing here called obstacle adjustment. And what obstacle adjustment is, is it's just a delta, which is how far away um, you, how much you want to push these things relative to the mesh radius. So if I think that these are too far away, what I can do is on the obstacle adjustment, I can put in a negative value. And when I replant the val things, uh, when, I, when I cause it to replant, you'll notice that they get closer together, right? And you can see that these things are sort of getting closer and closer to uh, the things that they were avoiding in the past, right? And I can push that as far as I want. I can even make it basically be interior. So what that means is now like things can just bleed over the edge of stuff uh, to some degree, right? Like you can see it's happening right there. Um, and I don't know if that's enough control. Uh, there are things we can do that are better than that if we actually compute sort of the manifold ahead of time, but I haven't gotten to the place where we can really do that yet. So hopefully that'll let you do what you need to do in short order until we get something better in there. Or maybe that's enough and you can let me know and we'll stop working on other things. So that's that. Now the other thing is there's a, there's a headroom setting that you can see. Uh, and what that is, is it's something that if you are going to suck things up directly, uh, so like let's say I go into the obstacle avoidance and I put a negative one in there and I do a replant. And now you can see that the replanting is kind of going right under these interior, uh, th this sort of uh, outcropping, I guess, let's say. It's going to be planted in there. And maybe, you know, I didn't really want that. So I was trying to butt up against edges, but I didn't want it to go underneath stuff because, hey, grass shouldn't plant underneath the, the low overhang or something like that. The min obstacle headroom parameter tells you, tells the grass system how much room there has to be in between the grass entity and the next closest thing above it in order for it to be legal. So if I go in here and I change this to 1.0, that means there has to be a meter you know, above it, and you can see that now it will not plant, you know, in those really tight areas in there, and I can continue to make that bigger as I go, um, <clears throat> and you can see it absorbs, avoids more and more of the overhang. So that can be useful. I don't know if we had any situations that absolutely needed it, but it was easy to add, so I decided to do it. Now, I think that's basically everything you need to know about the FANCY system. I don't think there's anything else uh, important about it. I will point out that there are some other visors in here that you can use. Um, one of them is if you want to see grass regions, like where they are you know, currently occupying, you can go to the grass planting area visor and you can see that that will bound the grass region by a little uh, sort of outline and it will tell you where the grass is currently trying to plant. That was apparently a problem before, I think, or she was saying that you couldn't tell roughly where you had placed grass entities sometimes, so hopefully that'll help. 
There's another thing you can do, which is if you are looking at a grass entity, you can ask for the distance curve for that grass entity. And what that does is it shows you this little curve you can see on here. I don't know if you can see that well enough. Um, <clears throat> but what it does is it overlays sort of a swath, which is what the distance between plants has to be as it goes from the middle to the outside of the distribution. So you can see I made this get smaller at the end, and so it's getting smaller at the end, and it's bigger in the middle, right? And what it also will do is if you set up scale variability, so let's say I said that you know some things were going to be two and some things were going to be one, you can, um, oops, right, better select the grass entity first, that was the other one. You can see when I do that, it actually shows me two bands. There's the outer band, which is what would be the distance at the maximum scale that could be picked. And the inner band is what's the scale at the minimum distance that could be picked. So it kind of just gives you a little like visible thing. Now this is useful when you're editing these curves since we don't have a curve control right now. You can notice that it will actually obey those uh, in this thing as well, right? So you can see, uh, like let's say I do some really weird curve, like, um, let's see, what would be a good example? Let's say I have this not set to scale at edge. So we're just seeing the curve as it is. And I go in here and I say that I want the planting distances to be from, you know, one to two, right? You can see it go like that. Now, if I was to do a really wacky curve, one that's big at the beginning, big at the end, but small in the middle, you can see that I can actually see that curve happening um, in reality. And if I make it kind of ridiculously different, you can see it again. So hopefully that is it's not you know the best thing in the world, but hopefully that'll give you some rule of thumbs if you're trying to figure out what your current planting curve looks like and where the different things are taking effect. Hopefully that'll give you a little bit of a indication of of uh, what's going on there, right? Now, similarly, if you want to see the scale of things, so not the planting distance, but just the the scale curve, you can see that one as well, right? That's the graph scale curve visor, and it shows the exact same bands, but just you know, for the scale instead of the distance. I think that's everything that's in the new systems that you should be aware of. If you have any questions, let me know, and uh, hopefully it'll help solve some of the problems you're having. Okay.